the concern with absolute scarcity in economics futures perhaps most clearly in Thomas Malthus' his essay on the principle of population, published in 1798. In his essay, Malthus claims that population, when unchecked, increases in a geometrical ratio that is exponential, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Subsistence increases only in an arithmetical ratio that is linear, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A slight acquaintance with numbers will show the immensity of the first power in comparison of the second. Others have explained his theory as follows. Malthus argued that increases in real income arising from productivity improvements or other sources would tend to cause population growth, leading to erosion and perhaps full dissipation of income gains, and also suggested that population growth might overshoot productivity gains, causing subsequent painful readjustment. In other words, Malthus warned that if population growth is not kept under control with preventative measures lowering birth rates, the population will outgrow the carrying capacity of its environment and collapse through higher death rates. The latter mechanism is also known as the Malthusian catastrophe. Malthus's theory led the UK to keep census data through the British Census Act of 1800 and is said to have influenced both Darwin and Russell Wallace, the pioneers of evolutionary biology. In explaining Malthus's theory, I use the concept of the carrying capacity of an environment. Even though the term carrying capacity may not be attributed to Malthus di directly, it is in line with the spirit of his theory. Pierre Verhulst introduced the concept mathematically in his Notice sur la loi que la population suit dans son accroissement, or Essay on the Law that Population Follows in its Growth. Let us consider Verhulst's equation for a moment. The change of population over time, noted here as ds over dt, is equal to some positive constant growth rate r times the size of the population s times this 1 minus s over k. This k is the mathematical expression for the carrying capacity. When the population is smaller than the carrying capacity, or s over k is smaller than 1, the total term is positive and the population grows. As the population approaches the carrying capacity, growth slows down and ceases as soon as the population has reached its maximum size given the carrying capacity. One can consider this a model for human population growth as well as for other species. For example, this type of population model is often used in bioeconomics to determine optimal harvest of fish. Note that slightly more advanced models would also introduce a minimum viable population. This would add a term s over k0 minus 1 to the previous equation, where k0 refers to the minimum viable population and captures the idea that it becomes more difficult to find mates for an increasingly small population. Figure 1 shows that the population below the minimum viable population size moves towards extinction. There is also little that guarantees a smooth path towards the carrying capacity as earlier described. For large growth rates, it is also possible that the population overshoots the carrying capacity, readjusts and overshoots again, etc. Moreover, it is plausible that the overshoot can irreversibly reduce the carrying capacity in the process. Such thought experiments are not difficult to show with the help of simulations. Recent work has used similar models to estimate the restoration potential of global fisheries, where nearly 70% of worldwide fisheries would benefit from reduced catch through increased fish stocks. Costello and colleagues estimate that the global catch could be increased relative to the business as usual with 16 million metric tons and that recovery sets in quickly with median fishery reaching recovery targets within 10 years. More recently, however, Malthus seems to have fallen from grace 
in mainstream economics. For example, the Economist published Malthus, the False Prophet, and Reuters ran an article entitled Seven Billion Reasons Why Malthus Was Wrong. These critics of Malthus point out that the assumption of linear growth in food production is flawed, and the assumption that the population increases exponentially does not hold as countries get richer. Indeed, countries with high incomes have lower birth rates, and during the last two decades, food production has grown faster than the population, although often not without adverse effects. For example, claiming more land for agriculture and increased use of fertilizer and pesticides all contribute to the loss of biodiversity. Some critics of Malthus go as far as to claim that we have never observed Malthusian catastrophes but this becomes difficult to maintain in the face of recent famines. Madagascar was facing horrendous droughts much of last year. The Guardian from May 2021 read, Madagascar's worst drought in 40 years has left more than a million people facing a year of desperate food shortages. The United Nations attributes the famine in Madagascar to the effects of climate change, as there is no violent conflict. Moreover, Madagascar has virtually no responsibility in climate change, but suffers the most severe consequences. Likely, the effects of climate change are worsened because of deforestation. Madagascar has lost between half and 90% of its original forest cover where the wide range stems from disagreement over the extent of original forest cover. Note that Madagascar is not an isolated case when it comes to deforestation. Conservation International estimates that only 5% of original forest cover remains on New Caledonia, and Griffith and Florence estimate that on Mauritius, there may be less than 2% of the original forest cover. In September 2021, the Dutch Broadcasting Foundation, NOS, also ran a piece on the famine in Madagascar entitled In the South of Madagascar, Cactus Soup is the Only Meal. I had not heard about the catastrophe yet and was in Mexico where we also eat Nepal. So I first took the news lightly, but soon I realized how unimaginably dire the situation was on Madagascar. I was living together with my three-month-old nephew who weighed a healthy five and a half kilos. And this article reported stories from the hospitals in Madagascar where children of older than a year weighed less. 